Hi, I'm Nicole Seely, a poet and a fan of Poets House. I've known Poets House for many years. I've attended readings there. I've taken workshops there. It was for me when I first arrived to NYC, one of the first places that I felt really, really welcomed. I am going to read today a poem by Ricky Laurentis from her award-winning collection called Boy with Thorn. Um, it's the first poem in the collection and it's called Conditions for a Southern Gothic. I chose this poem because the poem is just so strange and, and I'm a huge fan of strange and surprise from the poem's beginning to the poem's middle um, that has this very kind of weird list therein and the poem's end which questions God. And I, I think that this poem is just so irreverent in the best ways and I wish I'd written this poem. So this is Ricky Laurentis's Conditions for a Southern Gothic. Therefore, my head was kingless. I was a head alone, moaning in a wet black field. I was like any of those deserter slaves whose graves are just the pikes raised for their heads, reshackled, blue, and plain as fear. All night I whistled at a sky that mocked me, that fluently changed its grammar as if to match desire in my eye. My freedom is possible, it said, as if my torn off head in that bed swamped and whelming then with water had one wish, and it did, to think stranger stuff, to break that boring need to always have a shadow trail its maker, such that, one, the shadow snaps, rising to kiss the head, two, the kiss lands, the head flies up in airy revolt, three, cracked from the head come the crows of its thinking. Four, three crows move in minstrelsy against the night. Five, and the head still singing. Last night, a Negro was axed. Who among us was made to scratch a myth? Speak. If God made us in his image, it was the first failure of the imagination. Damn, that's good. All right. I don't know how I'm supposed to follow that poem with one of mine, but I will try. This is called Imagine Sisyphus Happy. Give me tonight to be inconsolable. So the death drive does not declare itself. So the moonlight does not convince sunrise. I was born before sunrise. When morning masquerades as night, the temperature of blood quivering like a mouth in mourning. How do we author our gentle birth, the height we were? Were we gods rolling stars across a sundog sky, the same as scarabs? We fit somewhere between God and mineral, angel and animal, believing a thing as sacred as the sun rises and falls like an ordinary beast. Deer sniff lifeless fawns before leaving. Elephants encircle the skulls and tusks of their dead, none wanting to leave the bones behind, none knowing their leave will lessen the loss. But birds pluck their own feathers, dogs lick themselves to wound. Allow me this luxury. Give me tonight to cut and salt the open. Give me a shovel to uproot the mandrake and listen for its scream. Give me a face that toils so closely with stone. It is itself stone. I promise to enter the flesh again. I promise to circle, to ascend. I promise to be happy tomorrow. That's from Ordinary Beast. 
Thank you, Poets House, for all you do for poets and poetry.